In this video, I'm gonna show you how to transform your films from looking like this into looking like this. And believe it or not, everything you need to get this cinematic film look is right inside of Premiere Pro. This step-by-step -step process I'm gonna show you in this video works on just about any footage you shoot and makes a massive difference in improving the quality of your films. And the best part, it's super easy to master as long as you understand the science behind color grading. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. So make sure you stick around for the whole video because not only am I gonna break down the easiest step-by-step -step method out there for color grading your film, Films, but I'll also show you how to actually implement those steps when making my most recent short film that I shot on the Sony ZV-E10, the film you just saw footage from, my story. Now the first thing that really helps with getting the cinematic film look before you ever bring it into Premiere is shooting high quality footage, obviously. Over the last few weeks, I've made a ton of videos going behind the scenes of the short film, My Story, where I show you how I use the $700 camera and a few hundred dollars of lights to make a professional looking short film in just one day. So I won't cover anything about actually shooting the footage in this video, but I will leave a link in the description for a video I made all about how I shot the film and was able to shoot the footage you see on screen now with a camera that costs under $1,000. Let's talk about the difference between color correction and color grading. Color correction is when you go through the whole video and color correct each clip individually so that each clip in your film matches each other. So for example, say you have a sequence with three cuts, one that's super underexposed, one that has a weird tint, and one that's a little overexposed. Color correction is the process of going through the video and correcting each of these issues and making each clip match. Now, these are extreme examples to illustrate the point. Most of the time, you're just gonna have two clips more like these two, where one is just a little bit off and needs to tweak just the hair to flow with the rest of the video. Color grading, on the other hand, is something you do to the whole video, not just the clips individually. With color correction, the goal is to make each clip look uniform and natural. With color grading, the goal is to edit the colors to give your film a cinematic vibe. All right, so I've got Premiere pulled up now, and I'm gonna walk you through the process of color correcting using the tools inside of Premiere. Color correction is something you do once you've got the video already edited. So I've got some clips here together on the timeline. When you're ready to do your color correction, what I normally recommend doing is coming up to the window tab, then going to workspaces, and then selecting color workspace. You'll see that this gives you a specific layout inside of Premiere that's specific to color correction and grading. On the left hand of the screen, you'll see there's a number of charts and graphs, and on the right of the screen, there's a number of color controls that you can use to actually do the color editing. Now, I won't go through what all of this is in this video. This would be like an hour long video if I did. So I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight the things that I actually use when I'm editing. The first thing I wanna do is change what all the graphs are showing up as in your Lumetri scopes panel. The only thing I really use is the waveform RGB graph. The other graphs can be useful for sure, but in all honesty, this is the only one that I use when I'm editing. Essentially, this graph is a plot of your dark to bright pixels. So down here, zero is black pixels. There's no color data because it's completely black. And at the top, 100 is the exact opposite, no color data because it's a completely white. All of your color, all the depth in the image is in between these two things. Now, Lumetri is what you're gonna use for all your color correction and all your color grading. Everything that you do inside of Premiere relating to color, you're going to be using Lumetri for. And this basic color correction tab is the main thing that you're going to be focusing on when you're doing your color correcting. Your exposure, when you move it, you can see it just adjusts the whole brightness of the clip together. You can see on the waveform that the whole graph is moving up and down, signifying that your exposure is overall increasing and decreasing. Then your contrast increases the contrast, exactly what you'd expect it to, so it makes the bright parts of your shot brighter and the dark parts darker. Highlights adjust the brighter portions of the image, so you can see as I adjust the highlights, I'm not actually moving the shadows on the waveform at all, and all the brightness of the shadows in the actual footage isn't changing either. Shadows are the exact opposite. As I move the shadows slider, the brighter parts of the image aren't changing at all, and I'm changing the darker portions of the footage. Whites and blacks are similar to highlights and shadows, but when you adjust the whites, you're adjusting the absolute brightest portion of the image. And then the blacks are the same thing, but with the darkest portions of the image. Okay, so we understand the basic controls for color correction inside of Premiere. Now what I'm gonna do is give you a step-by-step -step guide for actually color correcting your footage. The first thing you're gonna do is go through every shot and make sure 
sure all of them are the same brightness. Generally, you want to make sure that the brightest pixels are almost at the top of the waveform, but not quite touching the top of the chart. For some of these shots, you'll have to raise the brightness, which you'll do with the exposure slider. And for some shots, you'll have to lower the brightness of the image, which you'll do by reducing the whites. Now, if your shot's overexposed and a lot of your waveform is smashed against the top, there's only so much you're going to be able to do to recover that. Generally, you want to shoot slightly darker um, than what you actually want your final video to be, because it's much easier to increase the brightness of a video than it is to recover overexposed footage. Next, step two is to go back through your footage and then adjust the shadows. Generally, when you're increasing your exposure, it ends up washing out the, uh, the shadows of the image. So to compensate for this, you'll want to bring down your shadows a bit so that things don't look so washed out. This won't always be necessary for every shot, but you'll just want to make sure you go through the footage and be mindful that things aren't getting washed out. The last step to color correction and grading is to go through the footage one last time and adjust the temperature and tint sliders. Basically, your temperature slider shifts the colors in your image towards being warmer and cooler. Different lights are different colors in the real world, so sometimes you'll find that some of your shots look really cold and blue, while others look warm and orange. Generally, it's best to fix this while you're actually shooting the footage by setting your white balance, so there's only so much you can do when you're editing, but minor adjustments really can help the footage all come together and feel cohesive as a whole. Your tint slider does the same thing as your temperature control, except with green and magenta instead of blue and orange. Most cameras tend to tint the footage slightly between green and magenta based on a number of factors, so you'll just want to make sure that you go through all your footage and make sure it all matches and looks natural where none of the shots have a weird green or magenta tint to them. If you do have a shot that does, you can just correct it by dragging the slider in the opposite direction of how your footage tinted. So if it's tinted green, you just want to drag the slider a bit towards the magenta side to correct for this. And that's how you color correct your footage. You just match up the exposure of all your shots, then correct the shadows to compensate for washed out footage, and then tweak your temperature and tint controls as needed. On screen, you'll see before and after footage of my story, where you can see how big of a difference it makes to color correct the footage. In the before footage, you see how some of the shots were underexposed, where others were much brighter. Once we've color corrected everything, it makes the whole film feel cohesive and keeps the audience from getting distracted by changes in brightness or tint. Now let's look at color grading. Color grading plays a pivotal role in influencing the emotional response of viewers in a film. And different colors evoke different emotions from the viewer, which allows us as filmmakers to be intentional about the way we shape our audience's experience watching our films. By understanding the psychological impact of the different colors in our film, we can align the visual elements of our films to elicit specific emotions and reactions from our viewer, enriching the overall cinematic experience. For example, warm colors like oranges often convey warmth and coziness. It can also create a sense of love, excitement, or even danger. In contrast, cooler colors like blues and greens tend to evoke feelings of calmness and tranquility, but they can also be used to establish a very cold and unforgiving atmosphere. In the short film My Story, the color grade helps to set the tone that resonates with the dark internal struggle inside of the main character, Liz. If you look at the color corrected footage compared to the color graded footage, you can really see how the blues and darker shadows of the grade really help the film feel more dramatic and emotional, letting you as the viewer really connect to Liz on a deep emotional level and her struggles with her relationship to Mike. That just doesn't come through nearly as much with the original color corrected footage. Now, color grading is a lot more subjective than color correction is. With color correction, your goal is pretty much always to just take the original footage and make it look as natural and cohesive as possible. But with color grading, the tone and energy that you're trying to establish is going to change from scene to scene. So I'm going to use the color grade from my story to walk you through the Lumetri settings I used for the film with the intention of helping you understand the framework behind color grading your films. We'll look at the tools and how I've used them for this project, and then I'll give you some tips on how you can apply these principles to set the tone you're going for in your projects. Let's get started. Like I said, I was going for a darker and more emotionally dramatic feel to the film. So when looking at the color corrected footage, the first thing I wanted to do was bring the exposure down just a little bit to make the whole image feel slightly darker. When you're color grading, instead of just applying the color settings directly to individual clips like you do with color correction, you'll create a new adjustment layer and position it above all of your footage. When you make your color adjustments, you'll want to make sure that you apply those 
those adjustments to this adjustment layer so that it affects the whole film and not just one clip individually. To reduce the exposure, I just brought the highlights down to negative 35 to take the edge off the brighter portions of the image. Then to actually edit the color, I open the color wheels and match tab in Lumetri. You can see three color wheels that come up that adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights of the image. These wheels allow you to tint different parts of the image to different colors, which allows you to set the tone of the scene like I was talking about a minute ago. So you can see when I bring the shadows over to purple, the darker portions of the image get a purple tint to them. And then when I adjust the highlights, the brighter portions are tinted instead. So for my story, I tinted the shadows towards blue to make the whole image feel more weighted and dreary. Then I tinted the highlights and midtones towards the orange portion of the color wheel to create some contrast in between the darker and lighter parts of the image. That contrastiness really helps the whole film feel more dramatic in general. I also brought down the highlights just a bit more using the slider next to the highlights wheel, again just to bring the exposure for the whole image down a bit more. Now these color wheels are the main tools that you'll use to color grade your film. If we look at a film like Whiplash that has a really strong grade on a lot of the footage, you can see a lot of the shadows and midtones have been shifted towards the green hues, and the highlights have been shifted towards the orange. This gross color combination really consolidates the turmoil happening in Andrew's life and contributes to the feeling that the world isn't just a perfect and happy place. In contrast, look at the movie Barbie. Barbie Land is meant to be a utopian society where everyone is happy and excited about life. So you can see that all the colors are leaning towards blue and pink, giving a high key, energetic feel to the scenes that take place in Barbie Land. Of course, a lot of this is happening in the wardrobe and set design, but the color grade is very much enhancing the look and feel of the film. All of these color grades we just talked about could be achieved by using the color wheels in Lumetri to shift the hues of the image one way or another. Of course, if you shot in a dark room where the lighting was really dramatic, it's gonna be hard to get the upbeat, excited look of the Barbie movie, so you'll wanna make sure that when you shoot the film, your wardrobe, set design, and lighting all work together with the color grade that you plan to add to the footage so that you can pull off the cinematic look that you see in these types of Hollywood movies. Now for my story, the last thing I'm gonna do is come in and select the skin tones in the film and give them a little boost in brightness and saturation just to help them pop a little bit in the film. Again, the goal here is to create more contrast in between the shadows and the skin tones in order to set that more dramatic tone in the film. So the way I'm gonna accomplish this is to come down to the HSL secondary tab, and this is gonna let me select a color to edit independently from the rest of the image. I'm gonna use the color picker to select her skin tones, then I'm gonna select this checkbox next to the color gray. So now I can see exactly what I've selected, the orange portions of the image. Everything that you see that's gray is not selected, so I won't be adjusting any of the rest of the image other than the skin tones. Then I'll use the hue, saturation, and luminosity selection tools to really hone in the selection on just her skin tones. You can see that I'm also selecting some of the background that's the same color as her skin, but that's not really a problem. Now I'll bring up the denoise a little bit and my blur to blur the edges so that my selection isn't so sharp, and then I'll uncheck the gray selection box so that you can see everything in the image, not just what we have selected. If we want, we can then tint that selection any way that we want, any direction that we want. In this case, I'm just gonna bring up the exposure a little bit, bump up the temperature a hair, and then bring up the saturation. You can see that this makes the skin tones pop and adds an extra dimension of contrast to the whole image. And just like that, we'll desaturate the darkest portions of the image, throw on a gentle vignette, and that's our color grade for my story. We're not quite done yet though. The next step is to render it out and watch the film back on a few different screens. Every screen conveys color a little bit differently. So just because the film looks great on your computer monitor doesn't mean it'll look good on a TV, laptop, or smartphone screen. So before you wrap things up for your film and send it out to the world, you wanna make sure that you take some time to watch it on as many screens as possible. Watch it on your phone, on your TV, on your friend's TV, any screen that you can get your hands on. And you'll just make sure that the shadows don't come through too dark on any device, the exposure is consistent throughout. There's no weird tints or anything else like that happening to your footage. Again, every screen is going to be different, but your goal is to dial in the color correction and color grade so that even though one monitor is going to tint it magenta and another one's going to crush your blacks, overall the film still looks great played on any device. Now, like I've mentioned a few times in the video, how you shoot your footage does have a big impact on the color grade that you're going to be able to achieve. That means that to really get the most out of your color grade, you're going to have to be intentional about the camera setting 
lines that you're using as well as the lighting setup for your film. A lot of people feel like they really need big expensive cameras and equipment to pull off the kind of footage you see in Hollywood movies, but in reality it's all about the filmmaker's knowledge and vision for the film, not the camera they're shooting on. And to prove it, I shot a film on a $700 camera, the Sony ZV-E10, and managed to get the cinematic film look you're seeing on screen now. We produced a ton of behind the scenes content for the film, diving into the lighting setups we used, our camera settings, and everything else we did to shoot the film, My Story. You can check it out by clicking the first link in the description below.